For the most part of my life, I lived literally next to this country. But I cannot believe that I'm only just visiting this beautiful gem called the Republic of Benin. I recently took a trip back to Nigeria and in the middle of all of that madness in Lagos, I thought, do you know what? I need a break. And so I squeezed in a one week trip. A one week West Africa trip where I traveled to Benin Republic, Togo and Ghana. Benin was my first stop and it was amazing. Yeah. Well, maybe minus the way that I arrived because this was the stupidest decision that I've ever made in my life. I went there on the boat, on the banana boat. And if you're looking for a list of things to not do, this definitely should be number one on the list. In my life, never again. Good morning from this side of the world. We're reporting live from Kutonu. How are you finding it so far, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chiso? God. Bro, what did I sign up for? Bro, can you talk? Because of how close we are in Nigeria to the Republic of Benin, we share a lot of culture. Number one, there's a huge percentage of Benin Republic citizens who are Yoruba. Wow. <laughs> and it was so amazing for me to experience that. And of course, going way back, there's the transatlantic slave history that we both have in common. But at the point of no return, we stopped by on our way to, to Wida. Just as expected, it's just by the coastline, which is the route where the slave trade was operated. I kicked off my West Africa trip in Porto Novo. Porto Novo, the capital city of Benin Republic, even though, just like myself, many people would probably assume that it's Kutonu. I arrived on this banana boat. A very silly decision, and I'll tell you in a different video the story behind that. <laughs> Arriving at Porto Novo, we did a one hour travel all the way to Kutonu, where we were going to be staying for the next two days. In comparison to Nigeria though, or Lagos, things are way more expensive here. Or maybe something about the Naira. The Naira is so bad that you can barely get anything of value outside of the country. And so I got the lowdown on some crazy enchanting spots in Benin. And you trust me, I just had to visit and see for myself. Starting off from Gonvier, the grandest floating village in Africa. Right, just arrived, so we're off to Gonvier. If you're enjoying this video, I need you to pause, do me a favor, smash the like button and subscribe. Oh, I can't find him. Maybe that's him. Yes, tourists. Okay, yes. Good. We're doing some documentary about okay. West Africa. Okay. So we're in Benin now. Tomorrow we'll go to Togo. Okay. Then the day after we'll go to Ghana. Okay. Yeah. Well, some people call it the Venice of Africa. Mm, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you for a fact that it definitely gives Makoko in Lagos a run for its money. Number one, it's way cleaner. Number two, although I've never been to Makoko, but I've seen a lot of videos, people here seem just very much more nicer. But then again, that's kind of like a common theme that I experienced across West Africa on my six day trip. And in addition to that, it looks more organized than what I've seen on TV about Makoko. Bro, yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, welcome to Gonvier. Well, there's a very interesting twist to this story though. Apparently, these people have lived here since 1700s. But what's even crazier about this story is that allegedly the founding fathers of this lake city arrived on the back of crocodiles back in 1700. Mm, that's what they say.
The Gonvier story is very unique and so I need to make a separate video for that. After leaving Gonvier, we headed straight to this place called Babs Dock. Babs Dock is the home to this very beautiful river. So we're, we're at Babs Dock and we're about to go check it out. <laughs> Together with that, there's this mesmerizing mangrove forest. It was insane. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Before diving into the beauty of Bab's Dog, I had to try this local delicacy called Acheke. It's made out of cassava and it's often had with fried plantain, what we call dodo back in Nigeria. I'm trying Acheke for the first time. Have you had it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so I have this friend here. <laughs> and that's what we're ordering now. At their boy soul. Look at that fish on the side. Oh my god. And let's talk more about the people that have been in. Oh my god, these people are so nice. I think the people are way nicer than Nigerians. <laughs> to be fair, almost everyone is nicer than the Nigerian. But yeah, it's been nice so far. People have been helpful. They are so homely, super friendly, nice, incredible, and hospitable. Compared to the hustle and bustle back home in Nigeria, they've got this chilled, laid-back vibe going on. And it kind of reflects in everything that you see. From the way they carry themselves, to the way they treat others, and, and also even how they make things like their food. You can feel from tasting the food that there's so much care and patience that goes into this process. Benin has an interesting cultural vibe to it. You see, it has this fascinating mix that keeps things very spicy. Being a former French colony, you hear people speaking French. That's the official language here. But on the local side, Benin has a wide range of local tribes and ethnic groups. They have the Fon people, the Aja, Yoruba, Bariba, Fula, and a couple other tribes. Like I said earlier, Yoruba is a very common language here, Benin. And it really helped me as I was navigating. <laughs> Let me tell you, the practice of voodoo is a lot more very open here. It's often referred to as the birthplace of voodoo, but at the same time I saw a lot of voodoo going on in Togo as well. Apparently it's not uncommon to see people who practice Christianity and Islam, but at the same time they practice voodoo. Like this guy that we met in Gonvie. Yeah. Because <laughs> money, I go to church, afternoon, I come out with new things because it's traditional things. <laughs> so but back to my trip to Babstock. It was already getting late, but the mission was to catch the stunning sunset at Babstock. But to get through to Babstock, you need to go through this mangrove forest. And here is where things got a little bit tricky. Because we got there quite late and together with the fact that there was a bit of a communication problem with the boat guy. What you sell Sell Stay here. As much as he spoke Pidgin English, there was a language barrier going on. And so we couldn't really explain to him that we were going to the actual dock. There yeah, before it's dark. Easy tiger. He ended up taking us to some other dock, which isn't exactly Bab's dock, but at that point it was getting late anyways. So we just decided to kick back and enjoy the view. So breathtaking. It's crazy. Mm, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. The next day was two major missions. 
This is a statue called the Amazon and Wida, the city where pythons are worshipped. First stop was Amazon. So we came out here to see the Amazon statue and it's, it's Amazon now. I know you don't get to Amazon. It's not La Maison, no. La Maison is house. But this one is Amazon. La Amazon. Not the rainforest. But this beautiful statue here in Benin. And bro, this is insane. See how big this thing is. Oh my days. I've never seen anything like this before. It's huge. I mean, she was the female warrior that saved the people of Bene during a war time. Different people come from different parts of the world to look at it. The Amazon is so big. It's about 30 meters in height. The statue pays homage to the Daomey Kingdom's unique all-female army, the Amazons. Originally from the Kingdom of Daomey, these warriors, they serve various roles, from elephant hunters to being the royal guards. And I'll tell you, these ladies were not playing around at all. And they're said to have played crucial roles in major battles. As a matter of fact, they even defeated the French colonists in 1882. But I just sent to the square, you find a long graffiti wall. This wall spans over 940 meters. Essentially, it celebrates the Benin history from 1150 to the present day. Together, the statue and the mural serve as powerful symbols of Benin's identity, showcasing its history and culture. And oh yeah, I almost forgot. The story of the Amazon apparently inspired the Hollywood movie called The Woman King. A journey from the Amazon led straight to Wida. But as we drove by the breathtaking ocean, I just had to ask the driver. I was like, pause. We need to get an actual view of this beautiful, breathtaking coastline. Guys, see the water. Let's pause for a second. I need you to smash the like button and subscribe because that would help the algorithm take this nice content to other people who like it. Wow. Oh, guy, imagine we don't stop for this. You are joking. Wither is a town where snakes are worshipped. And just like the other ones, I had to see for myself how exactly this thing goes down. What have you heard about the Widerians? The what? The Widerians. 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 People who are from Wither. I don't know. I've heard. Eh? Are you scared? No, nah, not really. Well, to be fair, I don't know if it's Jews. I don't know. I don't think Jews is necessarily, but um, after all, before Christianity came, our ancestors used to practice traditional religion. So I guess that's what they practice in Wida. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. And you guys shouldn't tell my family this one because they're going to freak out. When you say Mokpa, Wida, one of one she, one man she voodoo. And one she voodoo. Eh. Okay. Because is like just other normal religion, just religion, no need be Christian or Muslim. No festival festival
it's, it's voodoo in English word. Voodoo French, no? French, no? Yeah. <laughs> Let's pause for a second. I need you to smash the like button and subscribe because that would help the algorithm take this nice content to other people who like it. After driving for about 20 minutes or so, we arrived at the coastline of Wida. You can see behind me this structure. On the structures, you can see, you know, designs of slaves making reference to the slaves that were taken through this coast. This coastline has a haunting history, history of slavery. What a way to be welcomed to the ancient town of Wida, the town of voodoo, pythons, and slavery. The town of Wida has such a unique story to it. I will make a separate video about that. Today, we have the beautiful beach right here. We came all the way through this coastline all the way from Kutonu and um, yeah people just stop over on their way to Wida to check out the coastline but let me give you a little bit of what to expect legend has it that back in the 1700s the king of Wida sought refuge in the forest during a war and apparently pythons emerged to shield him from capture to honor this protective role, the king ordered the creation of a temple of pythons. Where are we? We're in the temple of pythons. Yeah. Here in Wida. Wida. Public of... Nigga, <laughs> don't forget to end it. Inside this house, there's around 60 royal pythons. I'll make a separate video about Wida because that's a separate story on its own. Mm, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. I'm glad to have explored the Kingdom of Daome, or as it's called today, the Republic of Benin, from Gonvier to the Babs Dock the beautiful Amazon statue and the Asian city of Wida. It feels like a time travel of some sort and I don't really know how to explain it. Next up was Togo, where we had a crazy adventurous 24 hours. But before that, I'll give a big shout out to the new friend that I made on a trip called Mitch Cat. Hi. Hi. Mitch Cat works in the <laughs> hospitality business in Kutonu and she helps a lot of tourists with her businesses. Hola! Hi. I was introduced to Mitch Cat by a friend called Joe. He's a recording artist. Mitch Cat was absolutely amazing helping us through the different points and connecting us to the right people like the drivers and every other major thing that we needed to do while we were out in Benin. And so if you need the right guide and right direction and right help with your trip, you should definitely give Mitch Cat a shout. I'm pretty sure they will give you good prices. A quick reminder that you need to smash the like button and subscribe. Thank you. And um, yeah, turn your notifications on as well. Love.